Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. There are my tutorials that will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt, in the order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This is part one of my creating a thread tutorial here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my website, javacjava.com, select begin, scroll all the way down to uh, creating a thread one. Now, in my introduction to multi-threading tutorial, I briefly discussed that the thread class and the runnable interface are at the top of the multi-threading hierarchy. Now, I highly recommend watching that tutorial first. Now, for simplistic sake, there are basically two different ways to create another thread. Either extend the thread class or implement the runnable interface. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create a new thread by implementing the runnable interface in a class that calculates if a number is prime. Now, how do we determine if, an, how do we determine if a number is prime? A number is prime if it can only be divided by itself and one. If it can be divided by any other numbers, then the number is not prime, it is composite. There are many optimizations that can be performed when calculating if a number is prime, but the one that I will employ is the fact that a prime number cannot be even. I'm going to write a terribly inefficient method, on purpose of course, that will basically divide the number by every odd number greater than or equal to three. By doing so, we should chew up some time on a new thread now the runnable interface has a single abstract method named run with a void return type. So when we implement the runnable interface into a new custom class, we must override the run method. The run method is where we will put any statements or invoke any methods that will actually do something on the new thread. Now to make this all work, we'll need to create a new object out of our thread out of our class that implements runnable. Then, in order to actually start a new thread executing, we'll need to create a new thread object and evoke the constructor that takes a run runnable as a parameter. Once we have our new thread, we can invoke the start method, which will in turn invoke the overridden run method from our custom class. You should be confused at this point. That is normal. Now hang with me, and by the end of this tutorial, it should all make sense. All right, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight all this source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new, shortcut, CMD, next, and finish. All right, let's go ahead and open that up here. Type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. I want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called java with the md command, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to make another directory here called um, creating a thread one. Okay, change directories to that folder. I'm on notepad uh, creating thread1.java be the name of my source code file. All right, let's go ahead and control V to paste that or right click and select paste. Let's come up here, we'll just save this right off the bat. So there's two classes inside of this file. The first one creating a thread1 has the main method entry point. The second one down here is called my calculations and it implements runnable. Okay, so that's one of the things I was talking about there. So this, this particular one is going to become basically our new thread here. Now, inside of this class here, I've got the override annotation here and the public void run. And this is where the new thread will actually start. And I'm invoking this method called is it prime. But this is what's important to understand right here is because we implemented the runnable interface, um, we'll come over here to the documentation. Runnable is actually a functional interface because it only contains one single abstract method and that's run with a void return type, no parameters, okay? So we do have to override that, and that's where we'll put anything that you know is going to matter in there. So I just wrote this other method called is it prime. Now let's talk about the constructor that I've done for this class. The constructor that I've done for this class is fairly simple. Um, up here above the constructor, I've just got a single instance variable called number to factor. It's private long, initializing it to zero. And I'm going to be taking in as the constructor, the number to factor. And I'm just simply setting the instance variable equal to whatever is passed in for the for, um, for us to factor there, okay? Now the is it prime, <coughs> excuse me, 
the first thing, first statement that I've got in this one here is I'm going to take the square root of the number that we're going to factor, right? And the reason why I'm doing that is, let's say for example, and this is actually another optimization there. I know I said that I wasn't going to do one more optimization, but I had to do this one. Otherwise, it takes just, oh, it takes forever. So let's say, for example, the number 100, right? Um, its square root is 10 times 10. Once you get, so as you start checking all the factors of um, 100, right? Uh, let's say, for example, like 2 and 50, um, 3 and it'd be like 33 point uh 333 three, three, you know whatever right and 4 and 25 all right um anyway once you get up to 10 and 10 if you start dividing any by any numbers larger than 10 let's say if you divide it by the number 25 you're going to get the number 4 so now you're wasting wasting your time right so you really only want to divide up to the square root cuz any number larger than that that you start dividing by the the remain the you know the an, the um the answer only gets smaller at that point, so if that makes sense. If not, don't worry about it, it's not critical, I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, so um, basically what I've got here is I'm divided, I'm starting off at three, and I'm going all the way up to the square root, and then I'm just dividing it by all the odd numbers, right? Because we know an even number is is not is not prime, it's, it's gonna be a composite number, because it's, of course, every even number is divided first and foremost by the number two, so. This particular method right here is not good to determine if every number is prime, only odd numbers, right? So just, just to let you know on that, don't try to put it, put any uh, even numbers in there. It won't, won't work at all. Who knows what the results will be. But anyway, um, for odd numbers, this is 100% accurate there. So the first thing I'm going to do is number factor, and I'm going to use the modulus operator which is basically the division operator, and it, it returns the remainder, right? So let's say, for example, if we were to do like 100 and then uh, mod 3 starting off there, that would basically be divisible by 33. 3 times 33 is 99, and that would our remainder, or modulus, would be 1, right? So uh, that is not evenly divisible, but any, like, for example, um, if we were to do the number 5, which would come up next, 100 divided by 5, well, that's not evenly divisible either. It won't be our first odd number. Nah, it ain't even going to work. But anyway, let's say, for example, if we did like 100 mod 4, right, um, that would be 25, and there would be no remainder. And no remainder means that it's evenly divisible by it. And then evenly divisible, maybe that's not the best word right here because it's not like an even number that... Just, you know, it's like whole numbers, right, is your remainder. So anyway, um, then I'll display basically to the console, you know, the number is not prime, right? And it's first divisible by that, and then we'll just go ahead and return out. So if it makes it all the way through this for statement without returning, we'll display to the console that the number of the factor, or number to factor is prime, right? Okay, and then return. I don't know why I put that return in there. That really doesn't much matter there. But anyway, so that is the My Calculations class. All right, so this is gonna all tie together and make sense here in just a minute. So coming back up to the main method here, um, I'm just initializing my num equal to this huge number. And this number is prime, by the way, and you'll notice it's an odd number. Um, and then I'm displaying to the console the number that we're gonna be factoring. And now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a My Calculations, which is the name of my class here. Um, reference variable MC and set that equal to a new object, a new my calculations object, passing in the constructor, you know, this particular value here. Okay, so now we have our my calculations object. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to create a T reference variable, thread type, set that equal to a new thread instance or object, and invoking the constructor that, that we pass what's a runnable type class, right? I'm going to come over here to the thread documentation here, and we'll come down here to the constructor. So we're going to be using this constructor right here. And there's several other things, don't worry about those, we'll get into, into some other things here. But just starting off with, you need to understand a few things here. But So as long as we implement, as long as the class or the object that we've just created implements runnable here, it's a runnable object, okay? Because it's 
because we implement runnable, it's a runnable object because we know for a fact that it's going to have this run method, right? Because it has to, because of the runnable interface. We have to override that or it won't even compile, okay? So that's critical for that particular constructor. It knows that it's runnable. It knows that this particular object here has the run method in it, all right? So now what we're going to do is from the thread class, the thread class contains this method called start. All right, let's come back over to the documentation here and let's start putting the pieces together. So the start causes the thread to begin execution. The Java virtual machine calls the run method of this thread. You're going, okay. So there's another run method up here, right? So, all right, we don't have a run method on this particular thread here. We just set the, the thread equal to a new object, right? Um, here's where we're kind of like, gets confusing to people and this will make sense in here in just a moment. So um, if this thread was constructed and we pass the constructor a runnable object using a separate runnable um, run object, then that runnable ob object's run method is called. Otherwise, this method does nothing and returns, okay? So you're going, oh, okay, all right, this is, this is confusing, but I do promise this will make sense, especially further down the road. Okay, so we're gonna, by starting this, that is actually going to invoke this run right here, which is going to basically invoke our is it prime, okay? So as long as you're following with me here, this will, I promise this will all make sense. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, another reference variable main thread of thread type, and I'm going to just set that equal to thread to the current thread. And that's our, that's our thread right here, right? Um, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to interact with the user while our child thread up here, right, T, is actually doing the calculations. So I'm gonna initialize a primitive int value spinner zero, a primitive char value animation, just setting that equal to blank space. And the first thing I'm going to do is display the string literal to a console and then invoke the thread active count. The active count is a static method, so that'll return back two at this point in time. We'll have the main thread and we'll have the child thread that's doing its thing. And I'm gonna display the console then calculating, all right? And I'm, I've got, probably the cheesiest animation going in this while loop right here. But what I'm checking for is while our child thread, which is T, is alive, the is alive uh, method here is part of the thread class, of course, and it's really simple. It just means that uh, it just returns back true as long as our, um, our thread, child thread object here is actually still running. So once is it prime returns back either here or here, right, this, method will then get you know yanked off the call stack and this thread will then basically terminate. So, but while it's running, we wanna let the user know that it's actually doing something. So I'm basically adding one to the spinner int thing and then doing a simple switch statement here. So if it's one, I'll display a pipe. If it's two, I'll display a forward slash. If it's three, a dash, four, a backslash. And that's of course an escape sequence there. And then what I'll do is I will display to the console the string literal, which is a backspace right here. That's escape sequence for a backspace plus the animation, right? So we'll have a little rotation. It'll go from pipe to this, to that, to that. And it's just cheesy little rotation. And here's why I needed the main thread, because I'm gonna invoke the sleep method for 200 milliseconds. 200 milliseconds is one fifth of a second there. It's thousand, uh, thousand milliseconds in a second, right? And then, um, as long as the other thing is running there, it'll do the cheesy little animation. And then once that, that uh, our T, which is our child thread, once it's no longer alive, that'll return back false, break out of the while statement. And then I'll just display the active threads for this thread group. And then of course the, uh, the main thread will then terminate too as well once it's done with the main method there. All right, so let's go ahead and come up here and let's clear our screen. Let's compile this and let's run it. Okay, so here's our number to factor, active threads for this group too. Here's my cheesy little animation, all right, that's rotating through everything. So we can see that our child thread is actually doing something at this point. It's running through all these calculations to determine if this number is, is in fact prime. And bada boom, bada bing, right? So um, when I talked about in my introduction of why you'd want to do a threading thing, if we didn't have this interaction there, you know, the user might not know that anything is going on and be like, well, is this program hung, you know, depending on how long it takes to run something, you know, it's, it's just, 
it's it's a bad uh, design practice to to put you know long running operations on the main thread. Okay, so that's primarily what uh, what we're trying to avoid is doing a, a you know a, an operation that's going to take a long time and tie up stuff there. Okay, so it is prime, and then you can see active threads for this group one. So our other thread kind of went away at that point in time right there. So that, that's how this works. Let's come up here and just toy around and let's do some, some other numbers. And we always wanna do smaller numbers than this number because it's pretty close to the maximum value for a long. So let's just change this to like uh, 81. Let's save this, let's try that number here. Okay, so you can see that one went really fast. First divisible by 773. How about we change this to like 79. Let's see if we can find another one that's that's similar to that. That first one there. Oh, that's first divisible by three. That one went really fast. Let's just go down these odd numbers. Could probably just do a loop and start going through those if we wanted to, but. Oh yeah, so that one got up to 584,911 there, so not prime. By the way, you guys get the point there. Um, change this back up to 83, which is our prime number, which is, so, you know, I mean, you get an idea on how long it takes to calculate when you actually find one that, uh, you know, basically is prime there, so. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that, and I'll just get this off screen here. We don't care, it'll do its little whatever it's doing there running through all those calculations and I I'm just gonna leave you guys with some final thoughts on this one here so hopefully everything somewhat makes sense after watching this tutorial you know if not I always say you know try waiting a day then watching the introduction to the uh, introduction tutorial to the multi-threading tutorial and then this one again you know sometimes when you're le learning a new concept they just take a while to soak in but anyway that concludes this tutorial thanks for watching